Hi, thank you for watching this. Today I want to talk about doing small things for God. What? Maybe you're saying, I thought we were supposed to try to do great things for God. Well, if you can do great things, good. Most of us can't do things that appear great. I once listened to the biography of George Whitfield, who was a great evangelist, and he did great things for God. On the ship to colonial America, he converted foul-mouthed sailors. He formed a choir and did numerous Bible studies. He spoke to crowds of 80,000 in England. Nowadays, we have celebrity pastors. We have worship leaders who do concerts for thousands. It's so easy to compare ourselves with others. We can be tempted to envy others' gifts. Paul had to adjust the Corinthians about comparing themselves to one another. He said, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. 1 Corinthians 12, 21. When Cyrus became king of Persia, God stirred him to allow Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and the Jews who had been exiled to Babylon to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed almost 70 years previously. So Zerubbabel returned and he laid the foundation of the temple. But apparently Zerubbabel had little resources available, so the new temple was smaller than the original. Neither did he have the gold and precious stones that Solomon had used to adorn his temple. It was a small beginning. So many of the older men who remembered the size and glory of Solomon's temple wept aloud when they saw the new foundation. That's Ezra 3. It probably seemed doubtful that they would even have enough resources to finish the temple. So God sent Zechariah the prophet to encourage Zerubbabel. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. That's Zechariah 4, 9, and 10. See, God told them not to despise the day of small things, for they'd see the temple finished. They would see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Then God sent Haggai to Zerubbabel to encourage him further. In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet, now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. That's Haggai 2, 1 through 4. God tells Zerubbabel and all the people to be strong and work, for I am with you. Almost everything God does begins with a day of small things. A gigantic tree begins as a tiny seed. Every human being begins as a microscopic egg in the womb. Jesus' church began with a ragtag group of 12 disciples who abandoned him in his moment of greatest need. Our salvation begins with the imperishable seed of the Word of God. A mission project may begin with no more than a $10 donation and a desire to help someone. Oh, how often we despise the day of small things. Often, when people first get saved, we see little fruit. We can't imagine how many prayers it will take to see someone healed. 
A church building project can seem overwhelming considering the few resources we have. It may feel like we have an impossible mountain to climb before we ever get victory over sin. It may seem pointless to even try. It may look like we will never get established in life. It may look like our children will never become disciples. It might look like our friend is so far from God that our feeble few words about Jesus could never change them. We can feel like if we don't do something great for God, why bother? Well, here is what God says. Do small things for me. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Jesus compared sharing the gospel to sowing seeds. A seed seems insignificant. A seed seems to have little value. When we mention Jesus to someone or ask someone if we can pray for them, it feels insignificant. When we read the Bible for five minutes to our distracted children, <laughs> we wonder, did anything get through? When we pray for someone to be saved or healed, we can wonder if anything happened. Most of our Christian life involves sowing tiny seeds. Most of us can't give a $10,000 gift to our church, but we can give a seed. Here's what Jesus did and said. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Mark 12, 41 through 44. Now this widow might have thought, why should I give these two coins? They're only worth a penny. What good will that do? But Jesus said she gave more than anyone else because of her sacrifice. All she had was a seed, but in God's eyes it was huge. In Matthew 10, 42, Jesus said, and whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. What's a cup of water? Nothing. How hard is it to give a cup of water to someone? It's not hard at all, so it feels like it's probably worthless. How much does it cost you? Nothing. So it's probably worthless, right? Wrong. Jesus sees every single cup of water given in his name and will reward that seed. We're tempted to think, if I don't do something great, why do anything at all? But nothing we do is small in his sight. A man named Caleb Breaky said, Nothing is small to God when it's done in service to him. God doesn't forget a single penny or a single cup of water. Hebrews 6.10 says, For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. Oh, I can't wait to see how God surprises many on Judgment Day. It's going to be like what Jesus said. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Matthew 25, 
34 through 40. So don't despise the day of small beginnings. Remember the story of the loaves and fishes, or the two stories? God's word says, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. Matthew 14, 13 through 21. The disciples looked at the fishes and the bread that they had and thought, this, this is too small. How are we going to feed this giant crowd? 5,000 men plus women and children. Nothing is too small for Jesus to take and multiply. Jesus can take our small offerings, our small seeds, our small works that feel insignificant and multiply the effect. So plant a seed. Do small things consistently. You could get together with somebody and read one chapter of the book of John once a week. Who knows the effect that could have on them. Give one dollar to the missions fund in your church. Pray for 10 minutes in the morning. That doesn't seem like much, but it's in God's eyes. God can do great things. Read, read one chapter of the Bible a day. Send an encouraging text to someone. Might seem small, but do something like that. Pray for someone. Give some small gift to the poor. Buy someone a sandwich. Praise God for something, even if it only takes a second. Thank him for things. Thank him as you're driving for things. Sow lots of small, seemingly insignificant seeds for God today. You'll probably forget all about them, but Jesus won't miss a single one, and he will commend you on Judgment Day. Well, I hope this has encouraged you. Thank you again for watching this. Now go out and sow some seeds, and don't despise the day of small beginnings.